Hello, in this video I'm going to be showing how to properly clean and maintain your AK-47 rifle. Here on the table I have some of the um, tools and things that you're going to need to do first. Some little rags, paper towels, whatever. A gas tube brush. A soft nylon brush. Make sure you have a soft brush not made of metal, preferably nylon. You can use a toothbrush. We have a barrel brush, hard, hard metal. Um, something to hold little cotton swabs to clean up all the oil when we're done. Of course, little cotton pads. Some type of bore brush. Um, mine is detachable in pieces. You can also use a bore snake if you prefer that, but I prefer an actual um, cleaning rod. Of course, some type of cleaner lubricant here. I use CLP, which I think is probably the best stuff you can use. Um, I like to have another rag that I use other than my paper towels. I like a lighter color so I can see the junk coming off. And of course, these are optional, but I like to use gloves, some type of rubbery latex gloves because all that oil and stuff on your hands is going to stink for an extremely long time. Um, most of this, pretty much everything except the cleaner, the rags, and the gloves come inside this kit here, Real Avid. Um, it has a bunch of other pieces as well, but I fully endorse this, this product. This is great. It's a small little thing. Um, about the size of your cell phone and you can put it in your range bag for cleaning and maintenance it has a whole bunch of other little pieces in here but i don't i don't typically use any more than this so yep now uh, i'm gonna pull out the ak and we'll start getting to work all right now that i have the uh, ak fully field stripped notice the gas tube is off the bolt carrier group is out the bolt is out the dust cover is off the recoil spring is off and the AK is fully disassembled. Now, the, fir the very first thing I like to do is start letting some oil and cleaner get into this barrel. So what I'm gonna do first is I have a bucket here off to the side, off the camera. I'm going to get some oil and spray it down into the chamber here. And I'm gonna put the barrel in the bucket so that the muzzle is facing down and I have the barrel sitting vertically toward the ground so that when I spray the oil into the chamber, the oil is going to work its way down the barrel and kind of break through everything and while I'm cleaning the rest of the parts, I'm just going to let that soak. So, get a little bit of your oil, spray it into the chamber, and then put the rifle into the bucket barrel down. So I'll probably be doing most of that off camera real quick, so you won't be able to see that. Now, you could also spray a little bit of oil into the gas block as well. So now that that oil, I'm going to let that soak down into the barrel of the gun. Leave the gun facing down. Now, I like to do this kind of methodically when I'm cleaning the other parts. So the first thing I like to do is do the hardest thing first. That's going to be the bolt carrier group and the bolt. So let's move this other parts out of the way. Okay. Now. Similarly with how we let the barrel soak in oil, I'm also going to let the bolt soak in oil too. So you want to spray onto the face of the bolt here. And then a little bit on the edge and kind of rub it around so the whole thing gets nice and coated in oil. Now as that oil sits in here and breaks down, we're going to move on to the bolt carrier group. So once it's all lathered up, kind of set it aside for now it to the bolt carrier group. Now mine is pretty clean because I just recently cleaned it but typically if you're going to clean your AK this gas piston is going to be one of the dirtiest parts on the entire gun notably here around the rings on the front and the face of the gas piston. So same thing we're just going to spray a little bit of oil on that, rub it around, spray some oil down the length of the piston, rub that down with some uh, cleaning lubricant. Now here in the cutouts there's going to be a lot of carbon buildup and this is where you want to focus your cleaning in this groove here because if any type of carbon and buildup gets in here your bolts not going to cycle as easily and it's just going to really clog up your gun same thing here where the this little um, notch here in the bolt carrier group this is where the bolt and the bolt carrier slides along the rails of the gun so any place you have metal on metal contact you really want to make sure that's clean of any carbon buildup because it's going to um, hinder the cycling of the, the proper the proper cycling of the gun so kind of rub the oil in make sure you get it into this little um, opening here because that's where the bolt sits a little bit of oil in there 
kind of let that sit. Now here's where the recoil spring goes into the bolt carrier group in this tube. So I like to spray a little bit of oil down in there. Let that sit around. Now, now that everything is kind of soaking well with oil, we're going to use our nylon brush. So get your little soft tip nylon brush. Please, please do not use a metal brush on any of the bolt carrier group or the bolt. You will damage it and have a very bad day. So get your nylon brush, kind of just brush away that carbon. You're going to do some brushing. Again, I'm not going to do like a full detailed cleaning here because I just recently cleaned my gun. So yeah, so just make sure you get that nylon brush all up in there, especially those grooves. Any place where there's metal on metal, you want to make sure that there's no carbon buildup. Get that brush along the edge. Here where the piston attaches to the bolt carrier group, there's a little opening right there on most guns. Kind of brush in there. Now, your bolt carrier group and bolt are most likely going to be black, whereas mine is not black. Now, some people are going to say, oh, yours is just, you know, steel. It's, it's in the raw. No, for my gun, the Zestava ZPAF M70, they actually plate their bolt carrier group and bolt in nickel. And this is extremely corrosion resistant. And, you know, it's pretty sexy being lightened and not black. It looks really good when it's um, put all together. So kind of focus on the front of the gas piston here. As you can see, mine's still pretty black. Honestly, this is... It's pretty much always going to be black. It's going to be very hard to get this carbon off unless you really work at it. And there's a point where honestly a nylon brush will not be able to get some of this carbon off. So I have another tool here. I forgot to mention earlier. It comes in the kit. It has all the little tools you need to work on the 8K. And it's really nice for opening the gas block. And this actually has some scrapers in it that are made specifically for the front of this piston. So I can use these scrapers to kind of scrape off some of the carbon. Which is nice of course but you want to make sure the face the face of the piston is shiny because if you get too much carbon build up here it could affect the functioning of the rifle but I mean at the end of the day guys it is an AK it's it's gonna it's gonna most likely work but you should always you should always keep your stuff clean so now that I've brushed it and you know you may need to brush it for a lot longer depending on how dirty your gun is now that it's all brushed, I'm going to take one of my um, paper towels that I have here and I'm going to give the bolt care group a light drying. You don't want to dry all the oil off because you still want some lubrication on the bolt carrier group for when you go to use the weapon. So give it a light dry, kind of like a almost a pat dry. So. Most of the, the carbon is off, as you can see. Mine's looking pretty good. Now, the rule of thumb with, you know, how much oil should I leave on? You should leave enough oil where if you have no gloves and you, you press down with your finger, it should leave a fingerprint in the oil. So if you have enough oil to leave a fingerprint on, then you're good to go. So it's looking a little bit shiny, nice and wet. All right. So we're finished with the bolt carrier group. Now I'm going to move on to the bolt. Bolt, same thing. Guess what? We're going to get our nylon brush. And you're just going to brush that bolt down. Kind of get off all the carbon. The bolt really shouldn't be too dirty except for the face of the bolt. There's likely going to be a lot of carbon buildup in there. And again, we have metal on metal here, right? Because this is where the cartridge locks into the bolt. So any metal on metal, you want to get that carbon off. Especially here where it locks in. Underneath that little the little locking lip, right in there, there might be some carbon buildup, and that could actually affect the ejection of the spent cartridge. So really brush in there, be pretty thorough, be pretty rough. Your AK can handle it. Now, again, yours will probably be uh, much dirtier than mine, but that's fine. So we give it a good brush, clean it down. Once I'm sufficiently uh, pleased with the lack of carbon you're going to get your rag or paper towel doesn't matter and the same the same thing applies don't completely dry it off just give it a little pat dry you want most of the oil to be gone again think of the fingerprint rule if i can push my finger down and leave a fingerprint that's enough oil for for it 
Not to mention, I have oil over my gloves, so when I'm doing this, I'm actually giving it that, that little thin layer. So that's finished. I'm going to set that aside. Next, let's go to the recoil spring. Recoil spring, super easy, guys. You don't even really have to, have to clean this. But I give it a light little spritz. Spritz of oil. And I just kind of rub this down with my hand. Just to, to lubricate it a bit. And my glove ripped. These are trashy gloves. So give it a little bit of lubrication. And then use your rag. Wipe it down. That's all you really need to do for the recoil spring, to be honest. It'll, it'll be pretty gunky because a lot of the gas is blasting up into the recoil spring. But that's, that's perfectly fine. All right. There, clean recoil spring. Next, let's get on to the absolute dirtiest part of all AKs. And that is going to be the gas tube. Now, I have issues taking off the wood. So in this, I'm not going to take the wood off because my wood is, is stuck in there pretty good. Any other handguard, uh, upper handguard, you can remove for cleaning if you want. If you don't feel like it, you know, that's fine too. But... Cleaning the inside of this gas tube is, is going to be pretty gross. So what I like to do, from both sides of the gas tube, both op openings, kind of spray in. Focus on the edges. Now we're going to use our gas tube brush. If you don't have a gas tube brush, you can use a nylon brush and kind of force it in there. But since I have a specific tool for the gas tube, that's what I'm going to be using. Now, the gas tube brush that comes with this kit has a thinner edge and a thicker edge. This one's also meant for the, the chamber as well, but you just want to kind of force it through on both sides. Make sure you're kind of spinning the gas tube while you're pushing the brush through so it gets nice and clean. Now, you want to go from both ends. Do that a few times, probably a few more times than I just did. And you will see, if you get this and you hold it down, look at that black coming out. You see the nastiness? And again, I've already cleaned this recently, right? It is just actually that disgusting. Now, to um, get all the oil out of there, this is where you're probably going to need to use this little um, threaded one with a little bit of cloth. I'm running out of my little cotton swabs, so... I'm going to use paper towel and kind of fold it and then feed it through the eye. If you don't have this eye thing, that's okay. You can just use your brush and just put a little bit of um, paper towel or something over your brush. All right, and I'm just going to feed that through, wiping down all the edges making sure to clean up as much of the carbon again. Spin the gas tube while you're drying to really get all of those edges. Now look how dirty that is and that's pretty bad. Yours, you'll likely need to do this quite a few times to really get it out. You want to you want to keep on doing this with new and new, you know, cycle out get some new cloth until your cloth is just not black. All right. So that's how you clean the gas tube. Um, I don't want any oil on my wood, okay? Because the wood should only be treated with specific wood oils. All of this cleaning oil can really mess up the wood. If you have wood. If you have polymer, it doesn't matter. So I want my wood to be kind of oil free. Now that rule of um, how much oil should I leave on. The gas tube actually does not need any lubrication, so you can dry this one as much as you want. You don't need to leave that fingerprint rule of oil on the gas tube. So the gas tube is pretty clean. I'm not seeing any oil on that. Now we can put that aside as we're finished with the gas tube. Now the final optional piece, if you want to clean, is the dust cover. Now the inside of this dust cover will likely be pretty disgusting again, so I just do one little spritz of this, and I actually use my finger for this. Just kind of rub the oil around. You can take a brush to the dust cover if you want, but it's not really necessary. I just like to put some oil on it to make it look like it's brand new again. I love, I love that shimmer and shine on the gas tube. Now, 
take one of your rags that you've already used. This one doesn't have to be, you know, fully clean. And you give it a wipe down. So that it's nice and clean. You shouldn't see too much dirt on it, but it could be ridiculously dirty. It could be just a little dirty. It kind of depends on your ammunition that you're shooting, actually, on how much um, junky powder it's spewing out. Some of the, the less quality brand ammo, like Tula. Tula is a very dirty ammo, so it's going to have much more carbon blow off. Um, okay. Gas tube's clean. Now I'm going to um, get the AK that's been soaking the barrel and I'm going to bring it back up and we will clean the receiver of the gun. All right, so I got the AK back on the table. I moved all my other parts kind of out of the way. For this, you're just going to need your cleaner, a nylon brush. Again, don't use metal brush on the receiver. And yeah, so let's get started. So the oil has really been soaking into the barrel. Now I'm going to let it continue to soak into the barrel while I clean the inside of the receiver. So to clean the inside of the receiver, you're going to get your stuff and kind of liberally spray inside the receiver with your cleaner of choice. Focus on the trigger group and the front trunnion and the chamber. You really want to make sure that that is good. And of course the rail, this rail here where it's sliding, you want that to be very, very clean as well. Again, metal on metal. So let's get my brush and attach it to, I'll just use a single rod for this. All right, now I'm just going to brush the heck out of all these parts. The trigger needs to be clean. The rails here, the rails on the inside here, are gonna have some nasty buildup. So you wanna get your brush and really clean those rails on both sides. Now, depending on the type of ammo you have, you might notice some like colorful flakes in here. If you use um, Red Army Standard, um, the actual red box, not the white box. If you use the red box, Red Army Standard, or you use Bernal ammo, a lot of them have um, kind of this purple sealant on the primer in the case now that purple sealant will flake off into the receiver so if you see like what is all this purple stuff in here it's actually the sealant from your rounds and you want to make sure you get all that out too so i'm brushing here the magazine well my brush is giving me a little bit of issues brushing the magazine well you want that to be nice and clean um really get into the chamber and the front front and you want that to be very well cleaned now, the gas tube brush for me is actually a chamber brush as well, so you can kind of get that chamber scrubbed a bit. I oh, hope it doesn't get stuck. Yeah, you can use this brush to kind of get into the chamber, but the oil in the chamber um, should be breaking it down. So that's pretty much what you do for the inside of the receiver. Really brush it down, spend more time than I'm spending and really make sure that you're getting rid of that carbon. But the front trunnion is really the, the workhorse of the AK. This is where all of the abuse is happening, and this is where a lot of gunk is gonna start to build up. So really take care of your front trunnion and around the chamber. So I'm pretty happy with how clean this is. So I'm going to work on the barrel. Now for the barrel, you're either gonna get your bore snake or you're going to start connecting all of your cleaning rods or your AK might even come with a cleaning rod. So mine comes with a cleaning rod, but I don't like to use that cleaning rod because I like to keep it looking nice. And as you can see, the more you use it, it kind of gets scraped up. So I use the rod that comes with my kit. So I connect all my rods. Now we're going to use the thinner wire brush. This should not be steel. Okay, I don't think they even sell them, but make sure it's a softer metal than the barrel. And you're going to use this. And again, make sure it's the right size. So this one, this one's even labeled 762. I don't know. You guys may not be able to see it. This one's labeled 762, so I know that it's not going to damage my barrel. So that's all attached. Now I'm going to stand the AK up and I'm going to put the buttstock facing down. I'm going to get that brush and I'm going to go through the barrel multiple times 
because you really, really want to break up all that carbon that's been building up. And your barrel is going to be pretty gross by this point. So slide it through the front, push it all the way through. You should push it through until you see the brush come out the chamber into the receiver. And you want to do this quite a few times. So shove it all the way through until it comes out. Do that a few times. The more you do it, the more carbon you're going to break off the barrel. And this will not actually damage the rifling or anything like that because my brush is a softer metal. So do it a little bit more than me, but I'm just doing it for demonstration. Now, now that I've broken off all the carbon and the oil's been sitting there and really working at it, now I'm going to clean off all the carbon. You, this is a really important step that some people may not think to do, but if you don't clean out all the stuff in there, I just broke it off. If you don't clean it off, it's just going to harden right back up and stick onto the barrel, right? So make sure you take the time to get a cotton swab or something, attach it onto your little eye hook. So once again, I'm going to use a little, you can use a torn piece or you can use um, the little cotton things that come with the kit. They also sell those at uh, a lot of little gun stores. You'll see cleaning patches. I'm going to feed that through. Mine might be a bit too big. Let's rip it a little bit more. All right. Feed it through so there's an equal amount on both sides. Now the same way that we used to clean it, I'm going to use that now to swab through, and you're going to be amazed at how dirty this will be, even if you only shoot a little bit. You can only shoot like a hundred rounds or so, you know, a few magazines, and it will be absolutely disgusting. So same thing, in and out. A few times, really get it through there. Obviously do it more than mine, but mine I just cleaned recently, so yeah. So do it until until you're happy. Obviously, um, you should keep on doing it until there's not very much black left inside the barrel. But I'm pretty happy with that. That'll do for me. So next you want to work on the gas block. And if you have any type of muzzle device, there's one particular part here that you have to work on, or you're going to get some rust buildup. So... For the gas block, again, surprise, we are going to be using our nylon brush. So I get my nylon brush, I attach it to my rod, and kind of brush around the part where the gas tube connects, especially if you have ports on your gas block, like I have some um, little holes here. There's going to be some nasty carbon built up there. Clean both sides, kind of get inside the gas tube a bit. It's going to be pretty junky. Just all around it, I like to wipe. Okay, that's done. Get a rag, kind of pat dry. Same thing applies here, leave a fingerprint of oil. Pat dry all around there. If you have smaller fingers, unfortunately don't, I got big old man hands, you can actually put a little rag around your pinky and fit your pinky into the gas block and really get in there. Or, you know, you could use a rod, maybe fold a cloth, put the rod through and insert that in there and kind of dry it like that. But it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be too bad. This gas block, honestly, as long as it's not building up enough carbon where it's blocking the, the hole in the barrel, you're sh you should be fine. Okay, now the threads of your rifle. The threading is really, really prone to rust. If you have even a cap, um, a muzzle brake, any type of any type of device here, where the device threads onto the barrel, any bit of moisture in there will feed feed onto the rust. So I'm going to take some COP. I'm going to spray it right on the threads, and I want that to work through the threads, kind of soak on through. Now. You can take your muzzle device every time to clean, but honestly, that's a bit overkill. So maybe just brush, brush your muzzle device, make sure that that oil really worked into the threading. Because my first time I took off my muzzle device, 
on my other AK, I didn't realize I had to let the oil soak in there and there's actually a little bit of rust buildup. So let that soak through a little bit. Once again, pat dry, leave a little bit of oil in there just for good measure. Okay, now back to the main receiver. Some other problem areas on the outside of the receiver, your safety selector. You want to push this up. Mine actually locks in the safe. I can't put it any further up, but that's fine. Um, for the exterior, you want to just have a thin oil layer, so you probably should have oil on your hands, or you can use an oily rag. Kind of just give it a thin coating of oil. Right here where the screw attaches, you, you want to make sure you get some oil in there in case there's going to be some rust buildup. Let that soak through, and maybe move it around a bit, and this is stiff. Move it around a bit to let the oil work through, and that's good. Give it a pat dry, because you want to leave a layer of oil on the gun to protect from rust. All right, nice pat dry. Now we'll flip it over to the side that has the scope mount. Now, here's another big problem area on AKs. The scope mount is actually just pinned onto the receiver. Now, for the Zestava um, ZPAV M70, there's actually a hole on the front. There's a little hole on the top, and there's a hole at the very front here. Now, these are really tough areas because there actually is an air pocket in between the receiver and the mount. So a lot of rust can build up underneath this. So if you have some type of cleaner with a little rod, you can use this rod to really get into those areas. Spray it into the little holes to let the oil, let the oil really penetrate through the mount. Now the same rule applies that we did before. Make sure there's a thin coating of oil on the receiver keeping it nice, and get a rag and pat dry. Your gun should be nice and shiny by the time you're finished. Okay, another little area to look at, the magazine release tab. Here, put a little lubricant in there. Make sure that's nice. You can brush it if you want. You don't necessarily need to brush it but I like to brush it and same thing with the trigger. You want some oil to kind of soak in through the trigger and soak in through the uh, magazine release. Give it a nice pat dry. Let that oil really work its way through. I might've sprayed a little bit too much oil here, but that's okay. You really can't use too much oil to be honest. The only problem with that is you're going to be dripping all over the place when you go to put your gun away. But too much oil is not going to hurt the gun, guys. Metal loves oil. Alright, so that's pretty much clean. Now for the rear sight leaf, I like to push it up. Spread a little bit of oil here in the joint. Give that a little brush. Um, there really shouldn't be any type of carbon buildup here. I'm more using the brush to kind of spread the oil around. Give that a pat dry, maybe wipe it down. You want a thin little layer of oil where the um, range adjusting is to help that range adjuster slide. So I have so much oil in my gloves already, I'm just gonna give that an oil rub. Maybe I'll put a little, a little dab of oil here and put it back down. Slide it around up and down a few times to let the oil get into the metal and pat dry. Okay. Now there is a opening here in the front sight or the rear sight block where gas actually goes through. You'll notice there's the chamber, and then above the chamber there's this hole here, where you can kind of see my finger going through. That is where the piston goes through, and some gas goes through there, so you should probably clean that too. Get your nylon brush, 
shove it up in there, clean inside that that opening nice and well. And once again, once it's clean, get your rag, wipe off all the extra junk. All right, so now I'm pretty much done cleaning at this point. I'm just going to get a final clean rag. Make sure you have a clean rag to give everything a once over semi dry of oil to get all the, the oil. If you have any dripping of oil, you used too much oil. So I'm using this to wipe off all the parts that I've cleaned because there's gonna be a lot of extra carbon because we, we scrubbed the carbon off, but the carbon is just loose sitting on everything, right? So use that cloth, really get in there. If you have Q-tips, Q-tips are fantastic here for getting into all the little areas. I forgot to bring them out, but that's fine. So I'm using this rag, cleaning up all the extra oil. Now under the trigger and around the trigger is really going to be the difficult areas here to clean, especially if you use too much oil, but I'll use a decent amount, not too much. All right. So I'm happy with the amount of um, oil that's left. So now I'm going to take off my gloves because I don't want oil. I'm going to get one last clean rag and I'm going to wipe down all the wood because surely during this cleaning process, you have probably got a significant amount of oil on your wood. So clean off all the oil, especially the lower handguard. When you are sitting the barrel down and letting the oil soak through the barrel, it's almost certain that your handguards got a lot of that oil on and I want to keep my wood very nice and I don't want it ruined with extra oil another problem area here is where the stock meets the receiver sometimes some oil can leak through there yeah you can see the oil is leaking through give it a nice rub down and reassemble the rifle all right now that the rifle is fully assembled the most important step when you've disassembled your rifle and cleaned it is to do a functions check afterwards. So to do a functions check, obviously you're gonna put your weapon on fire. Remember your safety rules. Um, keep your weapon pointed in a safe direction even though you are almost certain it's unloaded. Always be safe, guys. So I'm gonna point it down to the garage here. I'm going to do a test fire. You should hear a click. Right, hear the click. I'm going to cycle the weapon. Do another click. One more cycle. Click. All right. Now I feel pretty confident that my weapon is clean, functioning, and good to go. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you learned something, and I'll catch you in the next video.